Hi everybody, thank you for joining me. I wanted to talk a little bit about gemstones today because I am seeing a lot of things on Instagram that I find very troubling. So um, you have to remember that I see your posts every day. I know what you're buying and I know that you're getting scammed. And I'm seeing it over and over again and it seems to be a really big problem. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about what to watch out for and some way to spot some gemstone fakes. Before I show you some gemstones and I have lots and lots of examples to show you today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what some things that you're going to encounter are. So the first thing that you have to remember about gemstones is that glass has been used since ancient Egypt to simulate gemstones. So in ancient Egyptian digs, you can pull up jewelry and it will come straight out of the ground from the pharaohs and there will be glass in it. Um, glass is prevalent, it's everywhere. Um, as a gemstone, you're gonna see it in every single era from ancient jewelry in Georgian jewelry, in Victorian jewelry, and definitely in modern jewelry. There's a lot of glass and plastic in modern gemstone jewelry. So that's the first thing that you need to be aware of. Any single gemstone that you think that you're buying can be glass or plastic. So that's the first thing that you need to know. The second thing that you need to know is aside from glass and plastic, there are synthetic versions of just about every gemstone. There are synthetic versions of diamonds, rubies, sapphires, and emeralds that you're gonna spend a lot of money on, and there are synthetic versions of inexpensive gemstones like amethyst. So any single gemstone can be a synthetic. There are a couple of gemstones that no one makes in, th in synthetics because it's not cost effective to do so, but the majority of things are gonna have a synthetic version of themselves. Even really expensive things like synthetic diamonds, synthetic rubies, synthetic sapphires, synthetic emeralds. So um, don't think that if you buy vintage jewelry or antique jewelry that you can get away from buying a synthetic. Synthetic rubies were developed in the late 1800s. They've been around for a really long time too. Most watches are gonna have synthetic ruby crystals in it. Um, the difference between a synthetic and a natural gemstone as far as cost goes is huge. So you can literally buy a synthetic gemstone for a couple of dollars. You can also buy a synthetic version of a natural stone that you think that you're, you're spending a lot of money on. So your, your thinking is that, gee, if I spend a lot of money on this, it's gotta be good. That doesn't necessarily have to be the case. There are other ways that people have decided to trick us. And this is really insidious. I have some examples here that I'm gonna show you in a little bit, but you need to be aware of it. And they're called doublets and triplets. And essentially what they are is this very thin sliver of a natural gemstone that's on the top of a gem and a synthetic version on the bottom or a glass version or plastic version on the bottom of it. So how these things are set in rings, you always look at a ring from the top so when you look at it and you're using a loop or a microscope, you're going to see natural gemstone inclusions from the top. Everything underneath of it is a synthetic glass or plastic. Um, and it's literally like a sliver. It's a sliver of a gemstone that can be as thin as a sheet of paper. These are made to fool us and they do fool a lot of people. Um, I have some, I'm gonna show them to you and I'm gonna show you a really easy way to figure out that it's a doublet or a triplet. There are also some things that I'm gonna tell you later and um, it's gonna blow your mind. So stick with me all the way until the end of this live video. Okay, everything that I have here is glass, plastic, or a CZ or a synthetic version of something or other. These tiny little red stones are all either glass or synthetic rubies. And it doesn't matter if it's gigantic like that or if it's teeny tiny like this. 
any size can be made to fool us and any size can be made a synthetic or a glass version of itself. This is glass. It's uh, made to look like a um, sapphire. So in fact, when you have it on your finger, it looks really good and it looks like it's a an, an really nice sapphire, but in fact, it's glass. These are all CZs. You're all familiar with um, a CZ that's a synthetic version of a diamond. That's what that looks like. And this pink stuff is also pink CZ. So these are cubic zirconias and these are synthetic versions of stones. So just in this little pile, I have glass and I have synthetics. So remember how I said that glass can be anything? Um, and remember how I said you can't get away from it and it doesn't matter if it is an antique piece or a modern piece. This is um, glass with fiber optics in it that is supposed to simulate a chrysoberyl cat's eye. So all of those Victorian rings that are absolutely beautiful, that have a halo of old mine or old European cut diamonds around them and a cat's eye in the center, these are being recreated with glass and fiber optics in the middle so that you can see a cat's eye. So this is not an actual chrysoberyl cat's eye. This is glass and it's a very good simulation. It doesn't matter if you're buying antique gemstones or if you're buying modern gemstones, anything can be foiled. So if you're buying antique foiled gemstones, you still need to be careful. These are modern versions of foil. This foil can literally just come off. But all of these are foil gemstones. They're made to look like, ooh, that's gross. Um, but they're made to look like foiled gemstones in antique pieces. So there are modern ways to recreate antique foil. So you definitely need to be aware of that. We need to talk about synthetics because you see a lot of synthetics. This is a synthetic ruby. This is a synthetic sapphire, and a lot of these things are so small that you think, oh, it's got to be natural because it's, um, it's really small. Synthetic star ruby. So as you can see, this star um, moves across the stone if I were to move my light source, but I'm not going to do that because then my phone will go out of focus. Um, but this is a synthetic star ruby. There are also synthetic star sapphires. We need to talk about doublets. So this lovely little opal is something that's called a triplet. So when you look at it from the top of the stone, it looks like an opal. When you turn the stone over and you look at it from the side, you can see that what this is is three different pieces. There's plastic on the bottom, there's glass or plastic on top, and there is this tiny, 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 tiny sliver of an opal that's sandwiched in between these two things. So this is definitely something that you're gonna see a lot. Um, I just did some appraisals for um, some antique pieces that were Victorian and they had um, opal doublets in them. Generally, you're gonna see opal doublets and opal triplets set in such a way so that the gold that is around the opal is gonna come up all the way to the top. You're gonna to see gold all the way around it and you're gonna see gold covering the bottom of it. So it's gonna be gypsy set. That is a way to hide the fact that you're not gonna be able to see the side to see that it's a triplet. And yes, it is a nice opal, but it is a triplet opal. And if you wanna buy it, that's fine. You should just know what you're buying because opal triplets you can buy for about five dollars so do you really want to spend several thousand dollars on something and have it be an opal triplet and not know i'd be pretty upset about that so um i'm assuming that you would be pretty upset about it too okay this is a doublet one of the doublets that i'm going to show you so this particular thing is um, ruby, an actual sliver of natural ruby on top, and it is synthetic ruby on the bottom. 
The way that you can spot this is you can shine a light through the side of it and you can usually see a separation plane. So if you look on that corner, you can see how it's white. That's not the light. That's actually the separation plane of glue between the natural ruby that's on top and the synthetic ruby that's on the bottom. I have a doublet that is a sapphire doublet and also you can shine a light on the side and you can see that there's a separation plane. You're literally, that white stuff on the corner is glue. You're seeing the glue reflect in my light from the natural sapphire that's on top to the synthetic sapphire that's on the bottom. So if you look at this from the side, you can see how thin the top of the sapphire actually is. But like I said, this was made to deceive all of us. This was made so that when we look at it from the top, we can actually see natural sapphire inclusions. So I have, ooh, I have a larger version of all of this. Oh, goodness. So here's my iPad. And this is that opal doublet in a very large blown up version. Here is that sapphire doublet that I just showed you. This is what it looks like when you see it through a loop. It is very, very, very evident. Like I said, you can see it with the naked eye, but when you look at it with a loop, you can really see it. So you all really need to know how to use a loop. Um, I'm putting something together right now to show you how to use a loop so that you can see if you're buying a doublet or a triplet and if you're getting ripped off when you're buying jewelry. I would assume that most of you don't want to get ripped off and you want to know what you're buying. So the first key to be able to do that, to take that step to empower yourself to buy what you think you're buying is to learn how to use a loop. And I'm gonna show you that too. This um, is really prevalent in Victorian jewelry and it's called Goldstone. It is not an agate. It is not even a stone. It's called glass. Yes, glass with glitter in it. That's what Goldstone is. So um, don't think that just because a seller is selling you something that the seller has any idea what it is. So these are the ways that you guys are getting scammed. Like I said, I watch it every day. I see exactly what you buy and I know that this is happening. If you guys want help, I'm here to help you. You can contact any gemologist. They're all over the world for second opinions. You can make these purchases that you're making um, predicated upon a second opinion from a credible source, like a gemologist or send it to a lab. You guys don't have to make these purchases all on your own. You can get help. There are people who are going to help you. Um, I'm one of them. So the other thing that I wanna tell you before I go really fast is that any seller who stands behind their merchandise is going to know what it is. And they're not gonna be upset if you want a second opinion. You can make a sale predicated upon determining and verifying what it is that you just bought. That is a standard business practice. Just like you would go to a lawyer and you would get a second opinion from a doctor, you can get a second opinion from what you just bought from a credible person. That doesn't mean that your grandfather or your dad who bought your mom a diamond, that means an actual gemologist. You can also send all of these things to labs. It's, they're readily available. Get these second opinions and learn how to protect yourselves so that you guys don't get scammed. I hope that you guys learned some things. I hope that you know that there are people who are here to help you. And if you have any questions, it's okay to ask them and it's okay to get second opinions. So go get those second opinions and be proud of your purchases and love what you buy. Talk to you later.